right. I think we're live. Please do let me know if you can hear me all right and you can see the screen. Hopefully there's not too much lag today. I can see some comments on the screen, but not in the in the actual chat. Just wondering if it's working properly. Um, cool. Hi, Johnny Boy. Bogdan Popovich. Sorry, so that's not how you pronounce your name. Hello. Great. That's what I wanted to hear. That it's working. Perfect. So, don't know what we're gonna do today. <laughs> I had a couple of options, a couple of ideas. Um, but what I'll do is I'm gonna start sketching. In, in 2D within ZBrush, uh, just using the, the normal sketching tools within ZBrush. And as we progress, you guys can let me know what you want to turn that sketch into. So a couple of options that I had in terms of techniques and, and tools that I can show you could be uh, how to stylize hair or just sculpt hair. Uh, that that would be one, not fiber mesh, just actual sculpting the hair. And other one could be just working with hard surface hard surface stuff, but um, more in a, an organic way, just showing, my, showing you my approach of how do I combine the hard surface with the more organic stuff. So that could be that could be something. So please do let me know in the chat. Uh, I'm going to be looking at it every now and again. So it's working. Hey, 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 everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Mondays with Paolo. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Gabe. All right, so I'm gonna start, like I said, sketching as we progress and you see these, uh, the sketch uh, progressing or evolving. Do let me know what you wanna see. If you wanna uh, take that into a fully flesh character or a creature or a hard surface kind of mecha robot, whatever, whatever you want. Um, let's have a look. Oh, the Facebook thing says that I'm Shane Olson. Oh, really? I didn't know. Let me just check that. No, at the bottom it says, oh, you mean in the Facebook thing. All right. Don't know what that is. Um, yeah, so not not Shane, <laughs> but we'll, um, I wish I was, I wish I was Shane, <laughs> but no, we're going to start with, um, I want to start with the, with the sketching. So the I have a, in my custom UI, I have a quick sketch here. If I just click on that, Zbrush is going to automatically fill this canvas with a, with a flat, kind of like color or flat material and a plane. So this is just a plane I can rotate around. And it's going to select uh, by default the pen shadow, but I just tweak the settings. So now I don't have, let me just don't do that. This is a quick sketch again. All right, so I can go ahead and select the, the brush that I want. I can use this pen shadow and I can just go ahead and get rid of the texture so that we have a simple simple stroke and we have by default symmetry enabled. So I like to start with like kind of like a middle gray and this is a really good way to, to get started or to just come up with some ideas with a very large brush, start defining the, the shapes or the, the silhouette, if you will. So again, I'm not going for something in particular. I'm just gonna let these shapes suggest what I'm working on. And I'm just gonna start adding some, some darker colors here, just trying to suggest where the lighting might be. A couple of dark areas here for the, for the eyes, the nose, or under the nose, and obviously here, the chin. That is if it's going to be like a kind of like a humanoid character. 
then just a bit of a lighter color here and we're gonna have the light coming from the top I can start reduce reducing the, the brush size I'm targeting this the, the sigmatic bone and the sigmatic arc here that's probably one of the highlights of the of, of what the light is gonna be hitting if it's coming from the top we can refine also this the nose as well and you can start see um, well I can kind of start to see this this sketch coming to life really quickly and it's just very very subtle very subtle stuff and I have the the C key or the C keyboard in my keyboard mapped to one of the uh, remote one of the keys in my remote so I can just select let's say you see as I hover over this sketch once I establish the 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 tones or the yeah all the the grayscale basically I can hover over this and you'll see the, the things changing here so yeah so I can check I can change to a dark color and can work keep working on that so we can target kind of like the the top lip if this guy is gonna have I think it's gonna be kind of like a humanoid thing <laughs> so again if the if they let me just do something really quickly here turn off symmetry so So this is a light bulb. <laughs> right, so the light is coming from the top. That's that's how to, that's kind of like the reference that I have here for the for the light. Let's go back to symmetry. And let's go ahead and select a, a darker color here. And I'm going to try to target all the areas that I think um, are gonna be in the shadows like or yeah or are gonna be having some cast shadows so like under the nose the lip here and here at the bottom in the main tone so really easy I mean it this can give you a suggestion of how things look or how they might look but it's pretty subtle I'm keeping the, the brush size really, really big. And I can start working with, um, you know, different tones to, to get the, the tones right. Obviously a bit of shadow here as well. Um, the larger, the, for example, in this case, the larger that you make the shadow here at the bottom, uh, that would indicate that the, that this protrusion here in the skull or this, uh, or the, um, the eyebrows would be <laughs> would be a little bit more um, sticking out, or they will have more depth because obviously they're they're casting a shadow. Um, so yeah, th that's that's kind of like how I think in terms of of tones when I'm doing these type of things. And again, this is just 2D sketching within Zebra Show, so a really powerful tool. And the fact that you have symmetry, it is absolutely fantastic. So let me just target this area as well with light. So again, depending on how much light or how um, how similar this tone here in the in the chin is going to be uh, or how close it's going to be from this top part or to this color in the top it will indicate that is either the the face is kind of like tilted up uh, so they have the same amount of light coming through or that the chin actually is, is, is sticking out all right um all right, something like that. And we can just maybe add a bit more light in here. As well as here, all right. So I think this is coming along nicely. Let's go ahead and do something for the ears. If this guy's gonna have some ears. I'm gonna start with a darker color. All right. And like I said, I don't have anything in mind. Like I, I, I don't have any reference or anything that um, I know I will be using. So please let me know how do you want me to turn this character or this creature into, or what what would you reckon would be interesting for you to see? Um, so I was thinking to stylize hair or sculpting hair. So that might be that might be an option. We'll see. We'll see how we go. All right, and I'll just check the chat in just a second. I like to, I like to block this out a little bit more so that you guys have 
an idea of where we can go from. And again, all I'm using is the uh, a simple plane with symmetry. The pen shadow or is very, very similar to the standard brush. No texture, no alpha, uh, large brushes. And I use the keyboard or the, the shortcut that I have mapped to my, uh, my control uh, to select the different tones that I already mapped out here. And that is with the letter C, so you know. So I'm just gonna embed a little bit more this kind of temporal low here. And now that I have a, a smaller brush size compared to what I had originally to set up these tones, I can start define or refine the silhouette a bit more. So it's not as blurry. Hopefully this makes sense. It's a very simple technique, but it really it really makes makes things easier to you know sketch things out like that. All right, I'm going to start just um, reducing the the brush size, and I'm going to start working on some areas that probably need a little a little bit more of definition. Maybe this lip actually needs. Some more light here, very subtle. Like so, and obviously here. All right. Um, you can also change the the brush size and the the alpha. Sorry, the alpha, the the stroke, so that it, it is a little bit more continuous. Because if I go into very small brush size and I select a dark color like here you kind of see this is a little bit dotted or like you can see the dots around so you can change to freehand it's not going to make a huge difference in all honesty but it will help so when i get to smaller brushes i can start using that for example all right so a bit darker here just to define this this line there we go and we can do the same thing with a maybe a lighter color like this one and then just refine this the edge of this lip here but as you can see very quickly we can just come up with something that looks interesting that gives you an idea of where to go from or how to take this blob of shadows and and tones and, and values into something that makes more sense so let's go ahead and refine this area a little bit. Oops. And I think I make I need to make this area a little bit darker. There we go, something like that makes more sense. I'm just going to target here the, the neck. Oh, I lost it, there we go. Remember that this is just a plane, so you could do that in any type of plane. It's just that when you use the quick sketch button, it's just gonna match the, the entire canvas, so it's pretty handy. And then if we select the white color, it is pretty much like an eraser tool in this case or just painting with, with white but you know it serves the, pers the purpose all right so now that i'm getting to something that makes that you can kind of recognize as a face let me just refine some areas really quickly and i look at the chat and see where do you think we can take this guy could be a quick 3d sketch or um like i said we can yeah, we can build this really quickly in 3D, just to sketch it out. And then what we can do is play around with some, some hair maybe um, to sculpt the hair. So that those are the, the ideas that I had in mind. And again, we can spread this across two streams. See how we go. All right. 
Maybe let's define the the eyes a bit more. And you see it's kind of like a humanoid thing, but the proportions that I'm using are, are relatively humanoid, but it's very weird looking character, kind of like a alien. All right, so I'm gonna check the chat and see how you guys are going. And then we take it from there. One thing I just noticed that this should be actually way darker. There we go, and that's it. And one thing that is cool about this method is that because this is just a plane, you can quickly scale the plane itself and then just change the proportions. <laughs> so that's really easy, but it um, it works really well. Also, because it is a plane, you can actually sculpt the plane and you can use the move tool to arrange the proportions. So I'm gonna show you that in just a sec. And you see it has quite a bit of geometry because, you know, so that we can paint it around. And this is just a sketch in 2D, but I'll show you those techniques in just a second. So let me just check the chat. Um, Hey, hi, how's everyone going? David, Paulo, are you Spanish? Give it a try in your model language. Saludos desde Zaragoza. Saludos. Um, no, I'm not Spanish. I do speak Spanish. I'm from Colombia, but um, yeah, not Spanish. Uh, maybe, maybe we can give this a try in, in Spanish later on. Um, in another session, we can definitely talk about that later on. Maybe a messed up pirate with scratches and wounds. That sounds interesting. We can turn this guy into a pirate, maybe not the in the in the regular sense sense of pirate pirating what uh, like pirates of the Caribbean type of thing, but more like an a pirate of the future or can like an alien pirate. That might be interesting. Like a yeah, maybe that's that's something to to do. Um, it looks like Night King in Game of Thrones, just like it. Yeah, I think I. Yep. That might be an option as well. I think the ears are then making making him look a little bit funny. So let's if we remove that. Let's just quickly see that. Yeah, that is more of an alien, of an alien nature. All right. So I'm gonna define this just a tiny bit more. Especially here around the nose. I think it needs more definition with smaller brush size. There we go. Let's just push this corrugator up a bit. All right, and for the eyes, what I'll do is I'm gonna keep them small and totally dark. That way we keep that kind of mysterious alien look. And then we can use a white color to just add a tiny little bit of reflection there, maybe with a smaller brush size. All right, so that brings this thing a bit more alive. And again, we can keep tweaking the or refining this shape here. And what's cool about this technique again is that then we can use the, the brush, any brush, any sculpting brush, like the move brush and tweak this, all this. So that's why I didn't got rid of the, of the ears because we can very easily play with those and um, change the size and the, and the shape. Alrighty, so I think we're in a good shape to move on or move forward really with this with this creature character. Uh, maybe let's go ahead and refine this jaw a bit more. All right. So 
So um, I try. I tend to just get lost when I'm doing these type of things because um, it it just requires time and patience, and it's it's kind of like hard to uh, to talk to talk you through the process while I'm doing these type of things. But so that's why I'm gonna just leave it there. I think Let's just add a bit more of highlights in here so we easily recognize the shapes. At least a bit more, and it has like a wide nose or a white, yeah, a white general shape. Um, so we can go with the white now, with the white color, and a smaller brush size, and we can just refine this so that it doesn't look as blurry. And this is something that we can also do after we use the move brush, but I'm just gonna do it right now. All right, let's have a look at the chat. Um, yes. Pace Pirate, like it, great. Ears, download your uh, your guides, found them very helpful. Series 19 tomorrow, I know, this is super exciting. Um, you guys are in for a treat tomorrow. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be really, really, really good. So um, let's have a look. Are you working on a critique? Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm critiquing myself as I go. So this is, uh, nobody's work is, I, I just started this today, I can show you. So we started from here. I'll just do a quick time lapse to show you what we've done so far. So we're up to here, and what I'm going to do is trying to convert this into a 3D mesh or create this mesh, um, and then take it from there. I think we're gonna create this, create like a space pirate with scars and wounds and all that, and maybe work on the stylized hair. All right, uh, so is this going to be a quick character or a full detail character? It's going to be a quick character, probably just a bust. Um, the idea with this session is to show you about a variety of techniques, um, very specific techniques and, and tricks and, and all that. So I'm gonna keep this one you know, very short. Uh, probably we'll, today we only have time to block it out and, and have an idea of where to go from. And next week, next week would be yeah, I think uh, I think the the schedule is the same. I have to check with Kyle, but uh, next week will be another session, and we will probably finish this character. Um, I'm trying to keep everything in only two kind of like sessions or episodes, if you want, um, so that I can move on to different things. So this is obviously very different from what we did last week, which was the little low poly diorama um, car. Let me see if I can bring it up. So you have an idea of what I uh, what we worked on. All right. So this is the this is the project that we finished last week. So very different from the character creature that we're doing today. This is just a low poly scene or diorama. Uh, you can catch up on like you can rewatch uh, this this stream in the Pixelogic channel. So yeah, just trying to make a variety of things and see what what you guys want to um, just want to check all right so um, dark dark sky storm ringer says uh, Wacom Cintiq yeah this is uh, the Wacom Cintiq 24 inch touch and it's it has really literally changed the way that I work it's just so easy and so comfortable especially when you man manage to map everything into the the control key this little Thing, um, because it will change depending on the application so I can map all my key my my keyboard shortcuts and everything from here the only reason I have this keyboard I don't know if you can see it in the, in the screen is because typing I prefer to do that without touching the screen I don't use the touch screen uh, much to be honest so that's why I have this here when I'm saving a file or or just creating a shortcut I just use this this here better than a drawing pad uh, yeah I think so <laughs> all right so the next thing that I wanted to show you here, let me just, this is what I said that it takes a while to, to get to a point that I start sculpting when, when I do these type of things. Cause every time that I said, all right, let's, let's start doing something else. I just notice certain things that could be refined and you know, and then I start doing them. So I'm going to try to stay away from that and let's, I'm going to show you a, another technique. So now that we have this sketch, remember this is just a plane with a bunch of geometry. Uh, what we can do is select, the move brush, right? And 
we can go ahead and start tweaking this. So make sure we have that set from our front view and perspective is not is off. And it's kind of like the liquefied equivalent, right? But obviously more powerful because we are in ZBrush. You can also use the smooth brush. So if I hold shift, make sure that RGB is not enabled. If it is enabled, it will just behave as a kind of like a blur brush. I'm going to turn it off so I can just, I mean, there's a bit of geometry in this case, so it's not, it's not doing anything obvious. So let's, let's try to refine this weird looking ears. And we can also do the same thing for the, for the general shape. I'm going to keep the eyes spread apart a little bit so that it has more of a, a different look, I guess. So one of the things that when I'm working on character design um, that I tend to, to focus most of the time is on the eyes and how they are laid out on the, on the face. Cause I treat every character, every, let's say just this face, I treat that as an entire composition. So the relationship and the proportions between the eyes, for example, and the rest of the, of the elements of the face, uh, that is really important. So let's make him a little bit skinnier and we can just push things down a bit, create a, a larger chain. So you'll see once we have the sketch, it's really, really, really easy to, to tweak the, the proportions. And and you can use also the, the pin, pinch brush, this, the inflate brush, all those sort of things. Uh, as well as, let's see, let's turn on AccuCurve. So now with AccuCurve, it, you get, um, kind of like a pointy bit. Uh, the only thing with AccuCurve, because this is just a plane, is that when we push things, it tends to pinch certain areas. So just be careful with that. You'll see that I'm destroying kind of like the, the topology, but again, this is just a sketch, doesn't, doesn't matter. So another thing that, um, you, that I like to play with is in the contrast of how, how you perceive the character and what certain things subconsciously mean um, in a way. So if you place the, the eyes spread apart and kind of like pointing towards each one of the sides, that is kind of like the, the prey, or like, if you think about like a deer or a cow or any of those animals, those are like, those are like prey. And if you want to create the, like the predator, then generally, if you think about a, a tiger, for example, the eyes are very close to each other and just pointing forward. So, those things, uh, you know, na nature, nature got it right. So, um, and you are, I think, subconsciously aware of those things, or um, it might suggest things like that. So, if I make this character, let's turn off AccuCurve. Well, this one looks a little bit stupid, but you know, if I have the the eyes like that, it would suggest it has it has more of a predator nature than if I make it weird like that. And, you know, this, this kind of suggests something more naive, I guess, more, um, yeah, like a prey, like a deer. Um, but I actually don't mind this one too much. It could be like a, I don't know. Let me just don't do that. <laughs> I was getting carried away with the shapes. Uh, but my point here is that with this technique, it's really easy to manipulate all the, the volumes that you have already established just with, with, values and color tones. All right. I feel like the, the ears are ruining this character, but maybe we can, we can do something like a, like a little stitch, little, little and stitch type of thing <laughs> remastered. All right. So I'm going to push the cheekbones up a bit and out. It's trying to refine this, the chin here. And like I said, you can use something like the inflate brush. So you can do these type of things. Uh, I mean, it's not too obvious here because it's just a plane. So it's, it's not pushing anything too drastically. Uh, maybe the pinch brush is easier. Yeah. So here we have the pinch brush. And again, this is just a 2D sketch. So it's really, really, really handy. 
and we can just go back after we do this quick refinements with the normal brush system or the sculpting brush system and uh, we can go back to the pen brush and uh, let's see where I have that so I just loaded hmm, let's go to P I think it was the pen pen a I don't know nope pen shadow yeah pen shadow it is all right so now that we have that again I can go ahead and start targeting these the sections though and just refine what we just did and and make sure that the the tones are working fine so I want to make this chin a little bit wider just to match the, the white nose and maybe refine that a bit more just just so that we can see or understand the, the shapes a bit better once we use this as a reference for the you know for the rest of the the 3D character, the actual 3D 3D model. All right. Maybe this could be something like like that. I don't know. What do you think? Now it become became something like an avatar character. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna leave that one here. In fact, let me just bring in the move brush. I want to keep refining. Another thing you can do is mask out areas, right? So. This is literally take it as a as a mesh that you have painted information. So we can do this type of thing, maybe blur the mask a bit, embed that, and we can just push things like that. And that we can change the the entire shape really, really quickly. So I don't wanna do that, I just wanna do it a little bit more subtle. Clear that mask and then just push everything down a bit. And again, the, the ears are kind of funny right now, but I think we just we just leave it as it is and then tweak them with the 3D sketch. All right, I'm gonna bring in the the pen once more. Pen pen shadow was the one, and I'm just gonna do a couple of lines to suggest some details or where I might, you know, maybe extend the mouth a little bit here like that and this is just like some design patterns I guess that could go along with this creature this character a little bit better all right something like that I think would be fine just trying to break it uh, break apart some of the the more plain areas go and maybe use this color here to highlight this shape here of the upper lip there we go it's bloody hot here today I'm already sweating it's gonna be like 30 degrees 30 something degrees today <sighs> alrighty so I think that's it we can move on I don't know if you guys have any suggestion apart from the the pirate the the space pirate idea uh, but then what we can do is also let me just create a layer quickly uh, we can do something like like this and add some some hair that we can you know play around with and I show you how to how to create, uh, how, to, how to sculpt, or how, what is my approach to sculpting the hair like this. So usually I just kind of like ruin what we've been working on, but I have that in a layer, so it's not a big deal at all. all right, and that could be just an old, an old pirate an old spa space pirate. All right, I'm gonna reduce the brush size and just refine some of these hairs here. Um, another thing you can do actually is go to the brush palette, go to the modifiers, not the modifiers, sorry, the, hang on, tablet pressure, go to size, and we can just refine the size curve here. So now we have, I'm gonna show you with a different color, 
we have a more you know um, extreme change between the the low pressure and the and the more pressure that you apply so that way we can work on this type of hairs a little bit better or these clumps of hair and reducing the brush size as well it helps go maybe some crazy eyebrows like this and I think um, is this from this type of eyebrows it reminds me of the uh, there, there is a movie which one I know I know you guys know which one I'm talking about it's just the the old is it a samurai is it the hidden tiger What's the name? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's the um, the old dude that has the this type of look. <laughs> All right. So this is just um, again a, as a as a reference, but because we have this in a layer, we can just see the young version and the old one. All right. So if it doesn't work, we just push that back to zero. Do another layer. I'm gonna quick, quick save this, and we can very easily try something, something else. So obviously this is just a, I mean it's a creature, and I'm giving them, I'm giving this creature kind of like very human traits with the stylizing the the facial hair and all that, but. You know, at this point we can do whatever we want and then just choose what looks good. So here is Mr. T. All right, and we can just reduce that as well. Um, I think I'm happy with something more like that. We can even mix these two together to get a bit of a, you know, uh, to be honest, I don't like the the one here at the top, so I'm just gonna leave this one at zero. And I think we're ready to just move on and try to convert this into a 3D character, or block it out so that we can start working on on stylizing these directly on the 3D environment. So let me just uh, kill Bill. That's the right Pi Pi May. Yeah, that's the one that I was thinking of. Um, so yeah, you maybe maybe you're right. Maybe I don't wanna have this. Let's see if I can. I haven't tried this, but it might be a way to erase stuff. So let's see if this works. I have no idea if it's gonna work, but we'll give it a go. I'll just show you in a second what I what I'm trying to do here. So I'm gonna create a new layer. In fact, let me just record on this layer, and I'm gonna bring in my trusted. Oh, where is it? Hang on. Yeah, this is not gonna work. So I was just trying to store a morph target just with the color information and then erase that, but didn't work. All right, doesn't matter. Pen, pen shadow. And I'm just gonna refine this back to where it was, kind of. Bake all. Oh no, I made a huge mistake. Yep, undo that. I'm gonna turn off recording, bake all, there we go. All right, so we'll figure out this part when we when we get to the to the three D stage. All right, um, the fist of the white lotus. That's the that's the one. Thanks for um, thanks for that reference. So we're going to do something similar to that, but obviously make it like an alien creature type of thing. So let's go ahead and now that we have this, I'm gonna clear this set of tools. I'm gonna bring in. Uh, we can save this as an image and just use that as a as a normal spotlight reference, but we can just leave it as it is, change to a, a different material here, and leave this maybe, actually, let's go ahead and assign a flat 
color or flat material, make sure that the M for material is selected and then I'm going to go to, well, I have it here, will be fill object, but you can go to color, fill object here. So now this is going to keep that flat shading or flat color for the plane, but then we can go ahead and append a sphere, there we go, and we can go to our matcap material or grade matcap. Select that sphere and we go to can go to the transparency, although transparency is not going to let us see through that um, through that sketch. So it doesn't really matter. What I'll do is I'm just going to push the sketch to the side, get out of the symmetry mode. It's going to be around there. And we just use that as a reference. That's not generally how I work in terms of, the, of having reference here, but in this case I think it's fine. So let's turn on symmetry for the, for the sphere. And we can do a couple of things. We can start with um, normal move brushes. And basically, you know, the, the normal way to, to establish the, the main features of the first primary shapes. Or we can just use the, the primitives to establish some areas. So I think in this case, what I'll do is use the gizmo to just generate that initial shape. Right? And then we can use again the same gizmo to hold control and duplicate this like so and we can also mask actually this is going to be the neck um, it's not going to be a full character but I do want to have the neck there not just a floating head so let's go ahead and bring in the deformers I don't know if they're going to work with the mask tools they shouldn't so well they do great all right, so I'm just going to flatten these two portions here. Click Accept, and then scale that up. And then just try to position this a little bit better. All right, I think I'm going to be back in just a second. I'm going to grab some water because it is really hot in here. So just to hydrate myself. So I'll be back in two secs. And we continue with this in 3D, or like the sketching in 3D. So give me one one second. All right, so here we have the base. Uh, we can also use insert brushes. Let's go ahead and select the insert primitive, and I'm going to select a sphere. Make sure that symmetry is on, and this is the this is going to be the the ears, which are kind of like a prominent feature for this guy. And obviously, using the the Gizmo 3D to sort of like set them in place, we can flatten this flatten the the spheres in this axis. Maybe rotate it a little bit as well as these axes like so and we can bring in the move brush with accu curve and we can use that to give it a little bit more shape all right there we go i can invert that mask or clear that mask and then use the same brush to just start to come closer to the to the real shape of this of this guy. Um, one thing we should do actually at this point is dynamesh everything. Oh I like to do that and just smooth this a little bit and then that we have that way we have a connection between those those shapes that um, that we established first. But then the rest is just a matter of using this move brush to come up with a 
a silhouette that resembles this guy. There we go. And I think this could be a little bit lower. And the same goes for the ears. But something that I like to do really early on in the in the process of kind of like establishing the these these volumes and and the silhouette is to just do a quick little maybe we could the we, with the dump standard brush just uh, do a couple of li little points in here and those are just kind of like my reference for what the eyes are gonna be and I try to place them right in the middle of the face and that gives me a very good reference of you know how to where to put the ears, for example, and the, the, like I said, the relationship between all the different parts. So I'm just gonna do that there, and this is just totally temporary. Um, let's go ahead and bring in the move brush. And let's define this jawline a little bit better. And now that we have these little dots here, we can start establishing things like the nose and the rest of the the rest of the more anatomical landmarks, I guess. I'm gonna push this down a bit more. And I'm gonna try to separate these eyes a bit. So all of this is just move brush. I'm not doing anything else but move brush. And that is how I like to start working on this because I'm kind of limiting myself to the type of things that I can do. Um, and limitation is, is kind of like a good thing, I think. Um, obviously you have brushes for everything and and workflows for everything, but limiting yourself sometimes I think is a is a good it's a good exercise. And you come out you can come up with a bunch of different methods just by you know, limiting your set of, of brush brushes. So this is just move brush and it's and it's smooth brush, sorry. As well. So we have two brushes and changing the brush size as well. But that's essentially it. And this is the process that I will take more time more than anything else. Just trying to make sure that the the silhouette reads well, that the that the primary shapes are working fine. All right. So I think this is working all right. We can bring in another brush at this point, and that would be the dump standard brush. And that I use this kind of like very similar to this, um, this one right here that I have, the PM butter knife, just to cut through the model and just establish some, some landmarks like that. Um, by the way, I forgot to put this into the ZBrush Guides website, but I will I will put it this week, hopefully. Um, these brushes, I got I got a request to put these brushes that I have here, the custom my custom brushes to add them. Uh, so I will put this for, I mean, the, the pen shadow is really just a simple tweak to what I showed you at the beginning. So I can put that in as well, but it's very easy to replicate. So I'm going to go back to the dump standard brush and let's go ahead and use this to refine some areas here. And I'm going to hold the Alt key to push some borders like that. And this is just, uh, again, I'm not trying to sculpt anything. I'm just cutting bits and pieces so that I know where things are going to be. Kind of. So here we have we have to define this a little bit better. So we have the sigmatic arc here. And here the sigmatic sorry, the sigmatic arc here and the sigmatic bone in this area. So these two connected here. The masseter. So let me just do that. Alright. So that is kind of like how I use this this brush to establish some of these cut through. Oops. And know what like certain things are going to be. 
and then I obviously this is super rough but I can just then go ahead and refine this all right so now that I have these landmarks maybe let's do something as well here and we're working with a very low dynamics resolution right uh, let me just see how we'll be time oh, pl plenty of time we haven't even hit the, the one hour mark so I think we're in a good shape to to block out this guy at least the face um, we'll see if we have time for the for the hairs but we'll, we're in a good in a good position right now all right so is it possible to extrude base mesh from the plane you did um, using the height map um, that is something that you can do but you will have to to paint so in other words in this case this this area that I have here wouldn't work too too well because I place the the light from the top so it's gonna it's gonna be like everything that is here at the top so the the forehead and the cheekbones and all that they're gonna come forward more and the nose more than the the one the parts here at the bottom same thing with the with the lips right the top lip is gonna be embedded or it's just a dark color so it's gonna not push as much whereas the bottom lip is gonna push forward so you could potentially do that you can just paint the the height map and then just project that but then you'll have to paint it thinking about that and the way to do that is just thinking about the the light just hitting the straight on like the the, the lighting hitting the, the face of the character in this case so you could potentially do that it wouldn't work with the way that I sketch this thing out um, but yeah totally you can do that uh, another thing you can do is just do outlines so you instead of doing this shading you just work on the outline and then you just project the outline and you'll get pretty much all these um, these lines here by the way I'm just gonna do a redynamish in there and so let me just go back to to the chat um, looks like AccuCurve is on uh, yes can you explain AccuCurve so AccuCurve it is actually really simple thing but super helpful so I have that in my custom palette here so these are two things that I use all the time with all the brushes uh, back facing masking which is to work in thin areas so for example in the in the ears in this case I would enable that and AccuCurve that works primarily with the move brushes so AccuCurve enable gives you this pointy bit it's like a pinch that it does at the same time that um, that moves things uh, but it's not really pinching anything it's just like selecting or grabbing things more gradually from the center point of the brush to so let me just bring in this to explain it a little bit better again it's very simple let's have a look oh there is an upgrade available for this I'm gonna ignore it for now right so the brush whoops there we go so this is my brush size and you can see when I move this thing around this is kind of like how much I'm pushing things with AccuCurve enable so it will have a point here which equival is equivalent to this one so the AccuCurve spreads the the influence of the brush a little bit more uh, proportionally between this point and this point right so you'll see if I have hopefully this makes sense but let's say if I have a tube like if I have 100% intensity and the focal shift 100% this is kind of like where the the brush will end up being so with AccuCurve you have this this gradient that is a little bit more you know a, a bit more gradual from this point to to the end and it just pinches things so that's one way to look at it let me just don't do that if I don't have AccuCurve enable right same thing applies but this time I'm just gonna click this clear that out all right so let's say the same thing applies but the difference now is that instead of being kind of like a more oops a more um, gra gradual distance it kind of have this curve effect so if this is the the curve <laughs> um, this is kind of like the the gradient that it does is it has a, a fall off here but it is 
just to, to think about it in simple terms, it is simply pinching or creating a more pointy, a more pointy point, <laughs> a more pointy area here when you push using the Accu curve. And you can enable these for both the, I mean, for any move brush. Uh, so if you have topology or if you have different meshes in the same, you can also use that um, Accu curve in here. All right, so Pixel Logic, wrong name for the title for Facebook. So what's the title in Facebook? All right, so let's go ahead and continue with this guy. I'm just gonna keep refining these these shapes, and and I use AccuCurve all the time to to push these things because it allows me to very quickly kind of like make sure that the areas that I want to to be pointy or more how how can I put that the areas that I that I want to make sure that have a sharp edge I can achieve that straight away with the with the Accu curve enable. Obviously not super accurate, but it gives me a good reference point. All right, we can bring in the clay, build a brush, and then just refine some things in here. Let's hold control, click and drag for redynamishing that. And I'm just using the, the clay builder brush to refine some volumes very quickly. So at this point, I think it would be a good idea to, to bring in the, the eyes or to have some ice. Um, let's also refine also this area. So I'm just filling in with the clay brush. You can use any type of clay brush, really. Uh, these are just good brushes to generally fill in these these areas. So I'm just filling those those landmarks that I created with the with the damp standard brush. And here as well, maybe with the clay builder brush, just because that one builds up volume a little bit faster and gives us this very sketchy look that I quite like, to be honest. Okay, so that first pass is kind of done, like the main shapes are there. Uh, we can actually push the, the neck out a bit here at the bottom, just so that it doesn't, it doesn't look that weird. There we go. All right, and we can actually tweak some shapes here. I mean, this is gonna change uh, quite a bit as we progress, but we have the, the bases done. So let's go ahead and bring in a couple of spheres. So I'm gonna append a simple sphere, select that and get out of solo mode. I wasn't in solo mode, so I oh, had that off. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off perspective and I'm gonna use this to scale that sphere and this is gonna be the eye. And we can just play around with the size of the of the eyeball maybe here outside. So that seems to be a a relatively good size for the face. Let's push that forward. A bit more. Alright, so this is gonna be the placement of the eye so now we can go ahead and maybe these two out so we can just refine that okay so now we can click mirror and weld and we have the two eyes go back to our mesh and here's where we can start uh, refining this shape 
So there's another way that you can you can create kind of like the, the eyelids and all that so that they match the, the spheres that you just brought in. So that's something that I like to do as well. I'll just show you in a second. I just wanna tweak the, the main shapes a bit. There we go. So, like Pablo said, AccuCurve and back face maskings are really useful. Yeah, they're incredibly useful. So, yeah, for example, if I were to use the clay brush, so just to give a, an example of that, here, and I start adding volume, he, volume here, it looks, well, it looks messed up, but the problem is the, the back side. So I can undo that and use the back face masking and then be more confident that I can work in these thin areas where, without, without affecting the back. That's what that back facing does. It should be enabled by default, but if you have that enabled with other brushes, it might not give you the, the expected result. So let's go ahead and select these spheres. And what I'll do is I'm gonna duplicate them and I'm gonna inflate them slightly. So I have a inflate slide here just a tiny bit, there we go. And I'm gonna dynamish that as well. Maybe push that up. And with this one selected, with the sphere selected, what I can do is bring in the damp standard brush and I can just, with symmetry as well, I can just cut through the um, through these spheres kind of like to generate the, the eyelids. And then we can refine holding the Alt key, right? So that's really easy. And that gives us that sort of like volume that we need. Obviously we can have, we, we need to spend time refining this bit, but at least we start with something, right? So that's just a quick way to generate these eyelids. Uh, another thing is we can go into solo mode. Actually, let's go into clay builder brush and I'm just gonna push this in a bit more. Uh, you can also do the same thing. Let's go ahead and increase the dynamic resolution control, click and drag. So we have now more dynamic resolution. Uh, you can actually hold control and mask out this area. It's a terrible mask, but you know, we'll do. I'm gonna invert that mask. You know what, it's easy if I just use the mask lasso. There we go. And maybe here at the top, I'm gonna turn off floor. And this is a technique that you can use as well for uh, something like the mouth bag. I'm gonna invert that. I now, I now, now I have this part selected or masked. I can invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, bring everything back in, and we can just push things towards the back a bit. All right, so that is pretty much it. We can just remove that mask and bring in the, the move brush, and we can start tweaking these, these areas. And remember, this part of these eyelids are separate from the, from the base mesh. I'm gonna switch to the base mesh by holding Alt and selecting the the subtool here from the canvas. And here's where we're gonna start fixing or tweaking these, these eyelids. Obviously this is too, you know, not necessarily correct, but again, it gives us something to start with. So I can bring in, for example, the clay brush, the clay, clay builder brush and start adding more volume here without affecting the, that eyelid. So that's really, really handy into solo mode and make sure that I'm refining this area as well. And bring in the eyes. All right, so this looks a little bit ridiculous. So what I'll do is I'm gonna merge this down. So now we have the eyelids and the head in the same area and we can just increase the dynamic resolution slightly. I don't wanna go too, too high. Hold control, click and drag and now they're part of, of the mesh, right? So now here's where we can start refining this with the clay builder brush or any other brush really. All right, 
Now we can spend some time kind of refining this, the nose maybe, and just generally defining some areas a bit better because, I mean, it's too sketchy right now and we can, and I think we have the, the main sort of shapes covered. Uh, we just need to define things a little bit better so we can start judging the overall design go and here defining here the, the nose a bit more again these are just um, cuts through the model to establish some landmarks uh, maybe the resorius here needs to be more prominent this line as well and also here the mentone and the chin all right so these lines I think really help to, so we can start establishing um, more interesting shapes. There we go. All right, so with those established, um, I just noticed that the neck is looking quite horrible, but you know, one step at a time. There we go. All right, so now that we have established this, or the, the main shapes, we can refine the overall look if we want to. And this is something that, again, I spend a lot of time, so I'm just trying to do this a little bit faster so that you don't get bored with all the refinements that I generally do. But um, I think for the most part, this is looking all right. Let's just push this area a bit more. So I think this is looking fairly similar to the to the sketch that we did. Um, now that we have those lines cut through the model and the the primary shapes, it kind of like in place, we can go ahead <clears throat> go ahead and start with the clay brush or the clay builder brush, any other brush that you feel comfortable with, and start refining those those shapes. So, hey Pablo, can you do a session on fiber mesh? Uh, definitely, hold on. There's a few chat, a few messages that I missed. Let me just double check. Um, did you ever work in the game industry? Uh, kind of. So not not in a AAA game or anything like that. Um, so and more mostly as a concept artist. That's generally that that's my thing. <laughs> um, I can like I can do the the full production, um, and I've done that, but not. I prefer, and I've been fortunate enough to uh, work as a concept artist mainly, so that is that is what I prefer as well. Um, that head looks like one of the dudes from 47 Ronin. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Um, can you do a session on fiber mesh? Uh, yeah, definitely that's something that we can put in there. Side effects says, Pablo, are you born to be a teacher? Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, but my my mom is a fantastic teacher. She's been teaching for all her life since I remember. My grandma used to be a teacher as well, so they pretty much taught me not only not most of the things that I know, but also how to I guess how to how to share what I know, um, the methodologies. So I I owe them pretty much that to them. Um, so thanks so much for saying that. <laughs> uh, can you repeat for the eyelid? Uh, yeah, I can repeat the eyelid really quickly, the eyelid. So all I do is, I'm gonna select this, go into solo mode, not solo mode, just turn this off. Um, I have a set of spheres, normal spheres. I just duplicate the spheres, go into transparency. You can do transparency if you wanna have a, an exact uh, view of how much you're inflating this. And then you can go to the deformation palette and here you have an inflate slider and the inflate slider is gonna push each polygon along the normals. So the normals are just the direction that the faces are pointing towards. So you can just inflate this like that. 
So I just inflated that tiny little bit. Then get out of transparency. Whoops. I don't know what I did there. Inflate that a little bit. I don't know what I did. No. So I did something wrong. <laughs> All right. So I think we lost uh, a fair bit of work. It doesn't matter. I was just trying to explain the the eyelids. Uh, we I think we saved some stuff. That's good. No, pretty much nothing. We saved nothing. Um, hmm. Well, we lost a little bit. Let's see if I manage to save something. All right. Well, that's uh, actually not too bad. <laughs> we we can go back to the to the eyelids, do a quick save. Uh, so let me just repeat the eyes really quickly. I'm not gonna spend too much time in here, but these are the type of things that happen when you click things without noticing. So let's go ahead and append a sphere. I want to try to repeat this process really quickly without talking too much. Just just at the normal speed that I would work for this type of things. All right, place the eye somewhere like that, mirror and, and weld. Then use the move brush. Just point this. I'll try to fix that in the right direction. Make sure that they fit nicely. So we lost a little bit of the, the general shape that we have given this guy, but it's not too bad. I mean, this is still a sketch, so we can just change things uh, dramatically without being too concerned. And this is a, something that I've learned through my years of things crashing, and it's actually very important that um, as a as you progress as a as an artist, as, as I think as a you, as you mature as an artist, to not get too attached to your to your creation. So um, you might like something that you're doing and you think is is great, uh, but if and it might be great, but don't get too attached to it because the next iteration or the next thing that you do is going to be heaps better. So. Not to worry about this, what I lost. Uh, let's go ahead and repeat the eyelids. So I have the, the spheres here. I'm going to duplicate that. I have the, let's go to the, the formation palette and I have the inflate, this lighter here. I have that mapped to my uh, the formation polish little palette here. So I can just, actually let's go into not solo mode. Let's turn off the head and repeat that with transparency so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And I'm gonna inflate. So I'm gonna do just a bit more. And this is kind of like help you define the thickness of of the eyelid, which um, that's something that I see a lot of people not well, a lot of the, the sketches that I see with people that are starting to work with character, they try to create like a very thin eyelid, and the thickness of the eyelid is quite it's quite prominent. So um, this allows you to see, you know, this is gonna be the thickness of that eyelid. Alrighty. So now that we have that, let's get out of transparency and I'm going to go into Dynamesh, maybe increase the resolution quite a bit, control, drag. So now we have that. I'm going to polish this so it's not that bumpy. There we go. Um, I also have a set of macros here that are really helpful. So I can just press this smooth object. And if it's not enough, I can press this X5 that is going to smooth things five times the, the normal smooth. So that's that's a little bit better. Let's uh, bring in the rest of the guy. And remember, this is a, a duplicate set of spheres. And we can bring in the damp standard brush, turn on symmetry in the X axis. And here we can just push things in to define the eyelids. That is that is pretty much it. I'm just pushing in. Uh, we can also hold the Alt key and bring that back or like sharpen this edge a bit. There we go. All right, and because this is a separate dynamesh, I can just redynamesh and use the move brush to, you know, place this a little bit better. But in this case, what I'll prefer to do is hold the Alt key, select the base mesh, 
and just try to refine this from here. So let's go ahead and bring in the Clay Builder brush. Kind of, I mean, this looks ridiculous at this point, like I said, uh, but, uh, and it's not as rounded, so it should be, you know, the eyelids shouldn't be like that. It should be more like this type of thing, you know, but uh, that's something that we'll refine as we go. Uh, so now what we can do is actually, let's select the head again. And something that I did previously was go into solo mode and just refine this area here, because this is something that generally gives me, you know, uh, it's it's annoying to to work on just uh, when you have this combined, so that you you don't lose this very sharp edge or the the fold of the eyebrow on top of the eyelid. So all this this is fat. <laughs> I'm just gonna add this, and then maybe refine this area as well. So I like to make sure that the, the planes here are very prominent and that is to match the design here. So we can do, what we can do is select the damp standard brush, hold the Alt key, push that out like so. And again, those are lines that help you kind of define like anatomical landmarks. So I'm just gonna define this a little bit more here. Again, this is not sculpting. Oh, I mean, it is <laughs> sculpting, but I'm not trying to sculpt any details. I'm gonna. At this point, I'm staying away from any details. This is just blocking the this secondary shape. So this I use this kind of like a knife to cut through. And if you have some some more traditional or like uh, if you know more about the traditional sculpting, that's kind of like how it works. And, and with the with this type of brushes. So that is that is that. Um, all right. So we didn't lose too much. Let's do a quick save just in case. And I'm gonna refine here the, the ears as well. And also bring in the clay builder brush. I'm just gonna push this temporal lobe a bit more and just add a little indication here for this muscle, the temporal one. All right. Um, I think we're back in back in shape let's go ahead and start using the with the clay builder brush or any other clay brush um, try to fill in those areas and maintain these planes so this line here what I like to do is just start pushing in and out until I refine this plane of the of the head same thing with this area and that's that is kind of like the same thing that I do for pretty much all these all these areas that I establish with the with the with the damp standard brush, I feel like I should push push the the bottom lip outwards a little bit more. Let's do that. So uh, we can. Um, there's another thing I I got asked this the other day, and how to create a, a mouth bag. So this character has the the mouth closed, but if you want to open it, you can do a. Um, a VDM, a VDM that has just that opening of the mouth, and then you just push it in, and then obviously work on the rest. Uh, you can also very easily select the mask lasso and select just that little bit, right? Invert that mask and select the gizmo center pivot to the unmask areas and push that in. So now you have that the kind of like aperture. And then you can use the scale in Y to s expand that at the, at the back. So let me just clear that mask and show you how this looks. Uh, turn off symmetry and turn double. So that's kind of how it looks. Um, and then if you want to refine the mouth back, because it's going to be very hard to, you know, try to do it from, from this angle. So this is actually a really cool trick. Uh, you can flip the normals, work on them, and then flip them back again. So let me just show you, and then I'll check the chat because there's quite a bit of movement in there. Um, you guys have been active today. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to show you how to tweak that mouth back so that we have that. Now, the only problem with this is that I currently have Dynamesh. So if I Dynamesh again, 
because they have the, we have some areas that are close to each other, it's going to dynamesh everything together. So from this point all onwards, what we can do is work with uh, Sculptris Pro, for example, and then you know project the details and keep working. Um, we are at a very early stage at this point, but you know we can work like this. So let's go ahead and let me show you that that trick that I that I mentioned. So if I turn off double, double is the one that allows you to see both sides of the mesh. That looks that's why this part looks like it doesn't have anything, but it's just because we don't see the inside of the mesh. So if I turn double, you you will be able to see um, both sides of the mesh. Now the trick is let's turn off double, right? And we can flip the normals. And because double is off, we are only essentially seeing the outside of the model, right? Oh, it's not sorry, the we're we're only seeing the inside of the model from the outside. That's like a kind of like a weird mind twisting concept, but you know it's there. Uh, the good thing about this is that obviously we cannot, from this angle, for example, we cannot sculpt the face. We are essentially sculpting behind the face on the back, if that makes any sense. So what we can do is just rotate around, and now we have this very simple access to the mouth back. And here we can turn on uh, sculptures, make sure symmetry is on, and do this type of thing. Really easy, just to add some geometry. And we can bring in the inflate brushes. Some of the brushes might behave differently depending on because we have the, the flip normals at the moment. But you know, I'm just using the inflate brush with the sculptures pro enabled to inflate this. So I, I didn't hide any part of the model or anything. I'm just flipping the normals and making sure that double is off. So that's a pretty cool trick to, to work with the with these areas. All right, so I think that is that's looking all right. We can obviously bring in the move brush and keep tweaking this a bit more. Right, so that is that is that. All right, let's click on double and you'll see the effect. And we can now that we have double enabled, we can just use this or advantage to push this thing together or closer. Um, one thing we can do is actually use the move topological brush with AccuCurve. And the move topological brush is going to take into account the proximity of the continuation of the topology. So in other words, oops. All right. So in other words, the move topological brush is going to look at how I'm just going to cut this, this image or this line, and these other lines represent different polygons. So the, move, the normal move, move brush will have an effect on this entire area, whereas the move topological would have, will if you press here, if you click here with the move topological, the move topological is going to evaluate how this topology goes. So it's going to say, all right, I'm not going to, I'm only going to move things that are close to this point, but that are um, part of the topology or the continuation of the topology. So it doesn't matter if this point is really close to the range, right? These points are very close because the, it gives priority to the ones that are continuously or next to that, um, to that line. So it would only affect this area. So hopefully that makes sense. It's pretty basic, but you know, in case you didn't know, um, so let's do a quick save just in case. Now we can use the move topological and you'll see that I have a pretty large brush, but I'm only moving these, these areas that I need. All right. Obviously if I do that here at the back, it's, it's going to be not as strong the difference because the continuation of the topology is not as, as clear there. So I can just reduce the brush size. Uh, let's go ahead and flip normals now and we can bring these together. Okay. And now that we have the sculptures enabled, I can just smooth this out and it's no problem. All right, so let's bring in the normal move brush and I'm gonna just try to recover some of this mesh that uh, we lost. But that is how I would approach this um, creation of the, the mouth bag. Let's go ahead and also bring in the damp standard brush and try to use this brush to recover some areas I'm going to turn the um, 
turn off Sculptures Pro. Right? Um, one thing we can do, uh, we can work with this mouth open actually, or a little bit more open like that. And then when we do the, you know, the, the remesh, we can close it together and that, that way we can work with a lot of more definition. So I'm going to leave it like that. I know it looks weird for the time being, but it will make sense uh, once we get to that point. All right, so I'm just going to quickly try to refine this, have a look at the chat, and we are still in track. Let's go ahead and merge these two together. Hopefully it's not going to mess with the with this portion. What we can do is redynamize with a higher number or with a higher percentage or not percentage, a higher resolution, and that way we will maintain this areas that are close to each other. Let's also play around here a little bit more with this. And here we have the, by the way, this is a, another cool, well, it's not a trick, it's just a, the way that I block out <laughs> block out um, ears. You just paint, like you have, um, let's clear that out. So I do this basic shape of the of the ear, right? So that's the ear. Then I just push things in to create kind of like this this shape, right? And then I just paint a, a distorted Y like this. So, right? And this is gonna have volume like so. And that's it. <laughs> that's how I block this. And then obviously you can refine them as much as you want, but it is a quick way to, you can see the, the Y in here, if I make it more prominent. It's a quick way to um, to block out this. All right, so uh, what I was going to do, oh yep, so I'm gonna combine these two together. So make sure that I select the eyelids, push that forward, merge that down. Okay, and then go to Dynamesh, make sure that I have a higher resolution. I'm gonna get closer to this area, which is the, the one that I need to see that everything works fine, and click Dynamesh. And that is pretty good, actually. There we go. So again, I'm gonna work with the with the mouth slightly open, so that is easier for you know for um when we do the the remesh or the C remesh, sorry, it's gonna be easier to to create this gap, and then we can just close it really really easy. Alrighty. So now that we have oops now we have the the eyelids part of the main mesh we can go ahead and bring in the clay builder brush and refine this a bit more Actually with the damp standard brush we we need to establish some other some other marks here There we go and then we can bring in the clay brush and start refining so I'm getting a little bit into too many details here, and I shouldn't, but again, I don't want to waste your time just watching repetitive process. I'm going to try to move a little bit faster. Okay, now we can... Uh, another thing we can do is, right now, we have more resolution, obviously. And we have a lot of these very sketchy lines, which I like, so I don't mind just leaving it as they are right now. But we can do a, a quick clay polish so that we don't see as much of these kind of jagged lines uh, as a result of the resolution that we previously had. So we can do a clay polish and then, or just a normal polish by features or something like that, and then continue refining this sketch. I just wanna do a bit more here push these areas as well. Uh, for the nose, you can do exactly the same as what I did for the for the mouth back. But I'm just gonna push this in manually like so, or sculpting, sculpting these areas. All right. Just trying to get this shape of the nose a little bit more, you know, a little bit more real than what it was, just a 
flight plan here. All right, so very sketchy, but it's getting there. Uh, we can also start refining this. I mean, this these were just uh, the landmarks, um, but that doesn't have to be that that prominent or that that strong. All right, so let's do a quick save. Uh, actually, let's go to the move brush, and I'm going to use the mask to mask this bottom eyelid, like so, and then we can work on refining the shape, make sure AccuCurve is enabled. And this is how I would refine these, these eyelids or the shape of it. Let's invert that mask and then we have the one here at the bottom. And this is kind of like just nudging things in place. I'm not pushing things too hard. Um, let's go ahead and mask out all this area. And we can push things a bit out without affecting the, the eyelids. Let's clear that mask, push things in. And for example, this muscle here, it's more straight. So I need to make sure that that one is fixed as well. So as we progress, you start to see certain flaws, obviously. And, and that is the point of using, you know, something like the clay builder brush that refines volume really quickly to sort of fine tune those areas. There we go. I'm just going to try to establish the kind of like the bone here with the nose. The rest is just cartridge or car cartilage. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the soft bit cart cartilage. Cartilage? Cartilage. I don't know. You know what, I'm, what, what I mean. All right. So again, this is not like necessarily a line that needs to be so visible. It's just so that I know or, you know, to inform the, the viewer where the where certain areas are. And in this case, just to inform myself um, how, to, how to evaluate the shape and how to tweak the volumes so that they more, make more sense. I don't make I don't want to make this bottom eyelid so prominent either. And again, if you want to sort of work on only this area, we can hold Control and Shift and use the mask lasso to hide this area and invert that. Oops, invert that selection, and we can just work on this area a little bit better. Just refine this, the shape. So the the top lip has kind of like three parts that should be pretty pretty evident. So I'm just working on those. I'll just show you in a second. All right, clear that out. So maybe it's not that clear here, but ideally you want you want to have three portions or divide this top lip in three portions. Um, and then you have, there's a couple of things that uh, I tend to look at when creating the, the mouth. And the first one is kind of this area here and this area. Right, so these three parts are very prominent. And the next thing is this angle from here, from this point, this point to this point to this point. Right, so something like that. And that way, you have this this prominent this prominent angle of the bottom lip and this more uh, reduced here at the top, right? So so they're not they're not straight. So that's something that I look at. Uh, whoops, when I'm creating this, tweaking the the mouth. I'm gonna do a quick save. There we go, and let's just push this with the AccuCurve enable. It's really easy, so we have a more prominent version of that of that angle. Obviously, again, it's too much, but it's good to have that indication of where things where the things are. And then we can go with the clay builder brush and refine this.
All right, it's coming along. Again, very sketchy at the moment. Um, we had a couple of hiccups and, you know, we have about 20 minutes. So I reckon we can just polish this, uh, these shapes a bit more and block out quickly the, like the beard and maybe some of the more prominent details of the face. And we can call this, this session done today. Uh, and then the next one will be projecting details, retopologizing it, or just do a quick Siri measure and maybe just working on, on fine tuning and polishing really this shape. But that is, that is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and I'm, I'm going to check the chat actually. I haven't done that. So let's just have a quick sip of water and see if you guys have any questions. Um, Saludos desde Costa Rica. Saludos dos moon. I I lived in Costa Rica for eight years. So saludos. My my parents live in there actually. Have some fun. Still very nice to see you doing the sculpt. Great. Glad to hear that. It's been recorded anyway. Um uh, why bother him to repeat? Um yeah, I don't mind repeating if it's just something that I did along the way. I, I just don't wanna break the flow too much, but I'm happy to, I mean, this is what these sessions are for really, to just answer some questions and have a, uh, have a little bit of fun. If you have done it once, the next one will be easier and faster and take you to the better place sometimes. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. And that is, that is the, that is the fate of the unexpected, you know, the unexpected crashes. Uh, you're running you're running in circles remodeling your stuff again uh if you do a project with the timeline it is it's deadly to your quality um yeah i agree with that as well um i, I wouldn't mind either i mean do save your work but you know Pablander, and if you make these eyelids and have to work them in any way it starts to get really wavy looking like most of my old sculpts and if you make thin eyelids and oh okay so you just I guess you are repeating or commenting on top of one of the things I said about the, the thickness of the eyelids so not necessarily a question great thank you so save um, why why do you use uh, the Aki curve uh, I already mentioned that is to create a more pointy a more pointy look like you just you can just play around with it too or rewatch this. I explained that already. Uh serious guys, please make final final support to the three D connection which you failed to make since two thousand eighteen. I don't know what that is. Alright, um please show us the new UV tools. There's no new UV tools. Um so you don't smooth it, it's just for seeing the volumes. I tend to smooth it so much when I model. Is that a bad habit? No, it is actually really bad. Uh, no, it's actually really good. I'll show you why. Let me just see this next comment. Hey, Pablo, I just joined in. want to ask from where I can learn the face anatomy or if you have something over your website. I don't have any particular... I'm not I'm not the greatest um, in, in terms of anatomy. I, I, I use tons of reference. Um, I just have certain things that I remember very, very clearly and I try to hit that, but by no means it means... By no means it is perfect. So I always... No matter how much I study and how much I practice anatomy, I always use reference, and I have a bunch of stuff um, that I can give you. So, have this guy from 3D Total somewhere here. I have a bunch of books as well. So I have the Anatomy for Sculptures, and that is sitting here on my desk as well, pretty prominently. Um, anatomy for Sculptures as well. It's really, really good. I have this other one as well for the female version. So a bunch of things. Um, I don't have a particular reference that I can give you. Um, if you want to look at reference stuff, or like, sorry, at anatomical tips, look at uh, Ryan Kinslian. Um, there's, there's so many people that do like a um, fantastic way uh, explaining things. Uh, uh, Luco, uh, glu Gluco. Glauco, Glauco, I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry, Glauco Long, Longi, Glau, far out, Glau, Glauco Longi. 
Oh, uh, Gluco. I'm just gonna put it in the in the chat later on. But he does uh, really good anatomical explanations of his things, and I think he's working on something. If you follow his Instagram, so there's heaps of people that um, work with anatomy really nicely. So I'm, I might not be the the go-to person to ask about anatomy. I can just give you some of my tips, uh, but I tend to look a lot at a lot of reference. So I wouldn't use my work as a reference to work on the anatomy, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, who was the one who asked that? Um, you don't smooth it. Um, you you see a lot of these volumes. So the reason I don't like smoothing this is because I like I like to see not just the volumes. I mean the volumes is um, even if you smooth the the character, you will see the volumes fine. Uh, what I like about this clay builder brush and the the strikes that it makes is that I can see the flow of the strokes. So I don't know if you can see it here, but let me show you the reason why I do this. So I have this stroke here and I can see I can see the lines and that helps me to to maintain kind of like the flow and, and remembering things it's just it's just a more fun way to work it, it doesn't affect the the final output I would if I were to create this in a more, more polished way um, I would probably just do a quick smooth and and then start working with the clay builder with the clay brush the normal clay brush and lots of smooth um, but at this sketchy point, it's really good. And for example, here it helps me. So, just to, I'm just trying to figure out a, a good practical example to show you why I use this. Maybe here. So the muscle of the mouth will generally go like this, right? Not generally, like it will always go like that. So um, if I do this with the clay builder brush, you have those lines that would suggest the mouth. However, because I know that that is how the, the muscle look and it's just the muscle, if I'm working on skin and, and all the fat and stuff on top, um, I can just start to play around with the opposite direction and this is the one that, or these lines that are completely um, perpendicular to the how the muscle of the mouth is or, or works, is the ones that, are, that, are, that I can use for, for, the, for the wrinkles as well. So really, really handy to just use the clay builder brush to, to create this. And it also has a very nice effect that doesn't, it builds volume really quickly, but the the tablet pressure is, is a spot on. So I can press really hard to build up volume, but very softly to just refine these volumes really quickly as well. So it's, um, I just like to, I just like the feel of it. It's, uh, there's no technical reason why um, I would use this over something else. I just like the the feel of it and the, the sketchy look. I haven't even worked on the on the neck, so we can, maybe we can do that. I'll leave that one for later. Another thing I haven't checked is the curvature here for under the the jaw, which looks fine, but you know the the jaw as well. Um, so again, these are the this is the this is the extent of my anatomy uh, anatomical tips. So the the jawline is, I mean, this is kind of like what you would expect the jaw to look like, and that is the the overall blocking shape. Um, then you can just refine it to be more like this, right? Uh, but in reality, or once you get into the details, the jawline is kind of like this. It has. Uh, it has this curvature like that. I mean, this is awful, but it has a bit of a curvature here. So let's do a quick save and we can just refine this like so. It's very subtle, but it does help a lot. Especially if you're doing something realistic or something, even if it's just a creature like this, but you want it to make it believable. Um, also here the the fat deposits and and all that can just enhance this a bit more so it doesn't look as flat. All right, and where were we? Um, you don't know what is the 3D Connection Pilot Pro have industry using it and you don't? 3D Connection Pilot Pro, never used it, never never heard of it. 
All right. Um, affirming what you said. Cool. Uh, big fan of your work. Thank you, G. Deadless. 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 So glad to. Uh, I got to see you working today. Great. Glad you're here. Uh, please check it, Pablo, on your free time. Um, no, sorry, I don't don't know what that is. <laughs> All right. Um, so how are we with time? We have about 10, 10 more minutes. So again, remember that I keep this. The mouth looks kind of weird right now, but I just kept it like that for uh, retopology purposes so that we can do a quick retopology of this. I'm just going to do a quick smooth here of the ear. Use the move topology, move um, the normal move brush with the um, Accu curve. And this is how also how the Accu curve is really helpful to just push things in like so. And um, I reckon I'm just going to leave it like that. Just do a quick, a quick refinement of these areas with the clay brush. There we go. And maybe just filling some of these areas as well. I think this needs to be lower, this whole thing. All right. And let's just refine this a little bit more. There we go. Just maintaining this very sketchy look so we don't worry too much about details at this point. So the, the details that you can see here are just they're probably going to go away because they're not even details. They're just part of the of the blocking. It looks a little bit skinny. Maybe we can use the move brush to fine tune the profile because I haven't worked on that too much. There we go. And I think this one needs to be actually closer to the to the to the mouth. Um, all right, so I think we are getting we're getting there. I mean, very sketchy, but we have something that looks all right. We can spend time refining, you know, the the neck because I haven't even put a bit of time on here. But we're getting there. Like I said, um, it's just a matter of refining these shapes and keep sketching. I think it's a it's a good effort for for the time being, um, considering that we lost like two minutes of work. <laughs> I'm not gonna blame the crash for not finishing this. All right, so we have this basic model. Uh, again, every time that I zoom out, that's a, another cool thing, or not good cool thing. Something that I would recommend you do often is just zoom out and judge the the entirety of the of the model from afar, because that's when you can really see some of the problems. Um, or not the problems, but like how how close are you to the, to the original model? I'm not following it um, entirely the the original mesh, but in this few minutes that we have left, I'm just gonna block out just very quickly just a blob for the for the hair, and we just leave it there for the next the next session. So I'm gonna do a quick save. Uh, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. It is 600,000 polys good for exporting an STL and for 3D printing. Yes, that would be good. I think that's a, that's a good amount of polygons. Um, you can increase it or, re or reduce it as well. Um, I haven't done much 3D printing myself. I have set up things for 3D printing, so I reckon that would be enough, but um, I haven't done much 3D printing myself. Um, you can, I'm, I'm sure, uh, who's the who's the guide in the Seabrush guides that, in the Seabrush life that is doing that. Um, I think Sebastian, Sebastian, which I think Sebastian is next after me. So the next person in Zebra's life, he does collectibles, I think. So you can just check that out. Um, that will probably, probably give you more, uh, a better, a better reference than myself. <laughs> All right. Cool. So now that we have this creature guy here, I'm going to bring in a append 
a sphere. Select that sphere and I'm going to bring this down, make sure that symmetry is enabled. And I'm going to use the deformers really quickly and this gizmo to position the, the sphere and create the beard. So I'm going to do something like that, rotate that. Yeah, I think that I think that works. So that is just a very basic shape. Um, let's go ahead and bring in the gizmo again, sorry, and let's use the taper deformer. All right. I mean, it's very basic. Uh, we can also use the soft deformer. And this one is really cool. Uh, we can determine how many of these points we want to use. So I'm just going to increase it like a lattice tool. And we can just mask out the ones that we would, don't want to use. And just do this type of things really quickly. So again, I'm just masking the points that I don't want or unmasking the points that I don't want, that I want to move, sorry. So for example, here in the middle, I can mask these ones, invert the mask, oops, invert the mask. And then we can also mask this out. And then we have only these ones here. So really handy. Let's do the same thing here for the side. Oops. Mask these ones out, invert the mask, and then we push this one. All right, clear that mask. Uh, the other thing that you can do is actually, if you have symmetry enabled, whoops, we can, we should be able to to move just one point. Uh, I'm just going to move these ones and then just do a quick uh, mirror and weld. So these deformers are incredibly powerful. I use them all the time now. All right, so accept. I'm just going to get rid of the gizmo, mirror and weld, and there we go. Uh, we can do a dynamesh as well. And then we can use the move brush, obviously, with AccuCurve. And I'm just going to try to push this along just to create that that blocking of the beard. And we can start pushing things out and, and in and, you know, um, one really cool thing that you can do, for example, with the, uh, what's the name, the snake hook brush is to enable uh, Sculptris Pro and then push things along the, uh, the visible surface. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Just want to make sure that I have a good base mesh for the beard before we leave it here. All right. So uh, what I was mentioning is that you can select the snake hook brush and enable Sculptures Pro. This is the one that allows you to do these type of things. Um, and we can very quickly block like pointy bits like this, right? So that's just a, a really quick and easy way to block out these these shapes. And we have Sculptures Pro, so allows you to very quickly smooth out everything and don't mess with the topology. So the the other thing I was gonna say is like for for these areas of the sketch around here. What we can do is, with this brush selected, it will take into account whatever we have visible. So the, the head in, the, in this case. So if I do this, just the normal click and drag, I can do this type of thing. Um, but it will do it based on the camera or the camera angle. So what I can do is click and then hold the Alt key. And ZBrush is going to you know, maintain um, this or spread this uh, snake hook brush along the the surface that is visible. So I can do this really quickly, holding Alt and just pushing this like so, and then holding the Shift key to smooth this area. I'm just going to do that a couple more times here. And this is very, 
very very blocky very very basic but you, you get the idea there we go now we come back to the move brush and we can push this like so and then we can start smoothing things out and then we can bring in the clay builder brush how out will we time so we're just gonna wrap up this here just gonna do a quick let's turn off Sculptures Pro, we don't need it anymore. Redynamize really quickly, and with the Clay Builder brush, we can add some volume. And then just refine this. And this is how I would block this, uh, this initial shape of the beard. And this is gonna be a sculpted um, detail, so it's gonna be a, a stylized carrot or character. Or, I don't know, maybe still, uh, I still wanna go for that pirate, alien pirate look. So very blocky, but at least you get you get an idea of how the flow of this hair. Or what's the flow of the hair really? And I'm just putting a lot of pressure in here. Oh, applying a lot of pressure for the for generating more variation in the in the volumes as I create these strokes. And of course we can bring in the damp standard brush. This is very, very rough, but hopefully you get the idea. And we will definitely continue with this and refine this to a more polished state in the next session. All right, so I'm just using the damp standard and I can press the Alt key as well to create this a little bit more refined and this is very, like I said, not only is it sketchy, but it's very, very strong. The the difference between the the depth of these curves, of these not curves, the uh, strokes. So um, one thing we can do, because we're having we're having this very strong. Let's just increase the resolution just a tiny bit. Redynamish, quick save, uh, quick save. Yep, and then I can go ahead and push this one even further and this is probably not how it's gonna look at the end we're gonna override some of these again this, these are not details so I wouldn't consider consider these details just like just lines to to follow later on when we sculpt it but you know once we have these because they're we're using very strong sharp lines and pushing things in and out uh, we can do a quick clay polish for example and it will just make this look a lot but a lot more a lot more better that is a way to say it a lot more better <laughs> um, yeah so let's just leave it there and we can bring in the move brush and just push things together a little bit better or even more closer to that so that it looks more like a beard All right, I think, I think I'm gonna leave it here. Um, so what I was saying about the clay builder brush is uh, I have this button here, which you can find on the geometry palette and expand the clay polish and click clay polish. And you'll see it sharpens all of these and basically applies this clay polish, which makes it look a lot, a lot better. So I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Um, I think it's been, it's been fun. Let's quick save. Um, and let's go ahead and bring in let's bring in this guy whoops fill object there we go I'll just put next to it I mean it's not exactly the same thing but it is a sketch that um, I'm happy with so this is what we worked on today. So I'm gonna do a quick round of um, answering questions before we wrap it up. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the things that I showed you in this in this session or anything really that you wanna know that I'm hap that if I know I'm happy to to answer. So with this beard, will this beard be fiber mesh? Uh, no, it's gonna be sculpted. It's gonna be a stylized character. I will probably do um, in the future a session dedicated to fiber mesh if you guys want. 
Uh, you missed a big part of the stream. That doesn't matter. Uh, actually, let me just show you something really quickly because a lot of people ask me where this is going to be later on. And obviously in the Pixelogic channel, it will be in the Pixelogic channel. But if you go to the ZBrush guides, ZBrush guides, So you can go to the ZBrush guides here, and I created a new menu called ZBrush Live Sessions, and these are the ones that you can catch up with any of these sessions. Um, so you click here, it would con it's going to send you to the ZBrush Live website to um, to my particular sort of section, and here you can see the, the schedule uh, for March and, and all that, and also you can catch up with previous streams. So here's what I was saying that. Um, I'm trying to keep everything within two sessions. So in this case, the first session was to block it out and create this creature. The second one, we did poly paint and all these feathers and, and finish it up. Same with this one, we block it out here, then we finish in and polishing, same thing. Uh, we block, we use um, C modeler, and that's another thing that I'm doing, trying to uh, concentrate on specific tools, in different tools as we progress. So the, the bonsai tree series, or these two videos, are about the um, nano mesh and a bunch of other techniques, but mainly nano mesh for the for the uh, leaves. And this one, for example, the past two were more about the um, low poly. So we did a lot of uh, C modeler. So you can check this out. So again, just go to the ZBrush guide website. Um, in case you don't you didn't know about the ZBrush Live, you can just click ZBrush Live session, and it will send you to this part where you can catch up with all of this. And this current live stream would be would be there. Uh, at some point next week, I hope. All right, so nice block out, very enjoyable watching you. Great, I'm glad that you like it. That is the whole point. Thank you so much, Pablo. Today I was struggling so much doing a mouth. It's inspiring me, inspiring looking you doing stuff. Hope you one day will work my passion. Learn so much today. Great, Adrian, Adrian, or Adrian Puyol. I don't know. Are you Spanish, Adrian? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm glad that you got inspired by that. I mean that. That mouth bag is a, a really fun trick, um, and you can you you can use that for a bunch of stuff. Uh, like I like I showed you in the first stream, actually the first session, you could potentially just duplicate this this head. So I'm gonna just duplicate the head, and I'm gonna go to you know assign a very dark color, and I'm gonna fill that, and I'm gonna bring in in the deformation palette. I'm gonna inflate that a tiny bit just the head, right? So I have a duplicate here, but then I can invert that so I can flip the normals. And now we have kind of like an, like an outline, whatever you look at it, you'll see, and it's not really an outline, it's just this, this additional head. But because we use uh, the flip, let me just turn off document to a white color and turn this off. So it's kind of like creating the outline of a comic style. Right? And that's something that we worked on the first. Uh, you, if you want to see more of this, you can watch the first trim. And that is just another trick that you can use using the flip normals in this case. Um, but that's that's about it. Um, great. I'm glad, really glad that you guys enjoyed it today. Um, some early from early form of Klingons. Yeah. Oh, tell me about it. I've been watching um, the Star Trek Discovery too much and too late at night. I love that show. I mean, it's very different from the originals, but I just like the fact that you know all the effects and and the creatures. And I'm I'm, I'm very simple in that way. So seeing creatures and designs and stuff like that is just it's good. And I like the story, to be honest. I wouldn't criticize it. I think it's a fantastic show. Um, Adrian, last question: If I sculpt a character and the reference has extreme pose, should I sculpt asymmetrical? A yes and no. Uh, what I would recommend, and this is my approach as well. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm not saying that is the right way or the wrong way. It's just how I would approach it. If you have a character with a very extreme pose, I would try to sculpt it symmetrically, but closer to that pose. Don't know if that makes sense. So for example, if you have a character, you know, laying back with a gun just pointing at you like that, um, I wouldn't work asymmetrically. I would just model the character or um, pose the character symmetrically like that so that it, it is closer to the pose 
And once I'm ready with the ma the major details and the major sorry the major forms and the details, then all I need to do is just move the hand slightly. Um, so that that kind of helps. So try to find the again if you have for example an an, ar an archer um, that has one one of the limbs or one of the arms stretched and the other one um, you know pulling the the arrow for example. So I would I would work in a, a symmetrical pose that matches the the more complex limb. So in that case, it would be this one. Sorry, the other way around. <laughs> I would I would work in as in symmetry in, in a pose that matches the simplest the simplest uh, form or the simplest uh, pose of the limb. So it will be in this case of an archer, the left arm that is stretched. And then what I can do. So this is symmetrical. Then what I can do is just move one arm, and that would be it. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, that is just a way to approach a very extreme pose and try to work on symmetry as much as you as you can, as for as long as you can. And then when you um, need to work on the refinements, then you can just pose it. Um, but that would be it. All right. Um, thanks, Oil Change. Thanks for tuning in. I've seen you be before. Glad you 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 were here. Uh, thanks so much. A blast hanging with you. Great, great to hear that. And thanks for the stream. No worries. All right. Really glad to hear some of these comments, guys. I'm I'm really happy that you're enjoying these little sessions. Um, I'm really having a lot of fun. So I'm going to leave it here. Hopefully this wasn't too boring to watch. I did a lot of repetitive action, action and actually sculpting. But um, yeah, we're going to leave it here. Next week I'm going to try to polish this character a little bit more. And just to finish up as well, um, I'll let you know. M make sure that you tune in tomorrow because it's going to be mind blasting. The, the new Zbrush uh, 2019. Uh, tune in tomorrow as well as probably next week I'm going to be releasing the the new tutorial on Seabrush guides about uh, Cmodeler so we're going to create a very simple it's an introduction to Cmodeler and it's going to create a I'm going to create a simple bathroom sim it's like about an hour tutorial very simple stuff uh, but if you were struggling with Cmodeler I I run through the concepts and the beginners for that and I think you're going to find it useful so I'm going to leave it here thank you much thank you so much for hanging around I'm planning on getting you new brushes this week. Uh, great. Oh, the, the skin brushes. Yeah, definitely. That would be great. Uh, let me know what you do with them. Um, another thing that I've been getting a request from, maybe I will do it here in the Seabrush Live, is to show you how I would use those brushes. Uh, and I'll also, I'm going to share something very soon that uh, Marlon has been working on with those brushes, Marlon Nunez, and he is just amazing with the, with the likeness. So I'm going to be sharing that very soon. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. So... Take care and thank you so much for tuning in. I'm really having lots of fun with you guys hanging around here. Pretty chill. So very different from what I generally do. So yeah, good to see you guys and I'll see you next week. Cheers.